certain extent, he was a, a statesman-like figure in the teaching of visual arts, and um, I learned a great deal from Brian, and it uh, always makes me a little sad, and also very proud to introduce Darren in um, keeping that memory alive. So, welcome, and um, we look forward to seeing you every year and remembering with you the wonderful contribution your father made, not just to this prize, but to the education of visual arts. And he worked for many years at uh, Morris Cogra and um, touched very many people's lives. So, thank you, Darren. Thank you very much for those kind words, Byron. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity for having me here and for all of you coming along tonight. Um, for those of you who don't know uh, about this prize, let me start by saying that it's named after my father, who was an artist, a teacher, and among other things, one of the people heavily involved behind the scenes of the Clancy Prize for Religious Art. This was up until his, uh, his death in January 2007. And it is a, a very great honor for me to be able to come here and present this award in his name each year. In preparation for tonight, I found myself casting my mind back to last year's exhibition as well as thinking about this one that was coming up, and particularly the words that we used for the theme. St. Mary McCoy's famous words, there where you are, you will find God. Now I remember leaving the exhibition last year and thinking how much those words resonated with me about my father. Now, partly that's because all of the words and stories of St. Mary McCoy were very dear to him. But there was also something particular about those words that resonated with me, as they connected rather specifically to the thoughts and actions of my father. The words brought to my mind something that my father often alluded to, that the creative act can be a form of worship or prayer. There are plenty of stories that explore the idea of art as something otherworldly. Oscar Wilde's The Picture of Dorian Gray comes immediately to mind. As in that story, a work of art chronicles the changes of a man's soul, while his outward appearance remains unchanged. There are plenty of other examples too, from Eddie Campbell's Bacchus to Roald Dahl's The Witches, and even the Green Lantern comic book. Over the years, many books, films, and other forms of storytelling have portrayed paintings as magical doorways, windows into other worlds that can be climbed through to explore the impossible realms beyond. I myself live with my father's artworks adorning the walls of my home, and often think of them as windows into his heart, mind, and soul. I once asked my father about his creative process, and he spoke to me about a project that we'd worked on together, a comic book script that I wrote which he then illustrated. He populated the strange fantasy world of the story with so many strange and beautiful characters, made them real by breathing life into his drawings of jaguar knights, gingerbread girls, and clockwork dogs. I asked him how he'd done it all, and he had to admit that he didn't really know. I'll quote you the exact words that he used. I can remember, he said, I just sat down and it all came together. The magic happened. I suppose that's part of drawing. When I'm drawing and it's happening, there is a connectedness to the paper, to the pencil, to the canvas, whatever. You're in another world and things happen. And while they're happening, it's just flowing. You don't really think about it. When I finish my work, I often look back and say, that looks good. I don't know how I did that. How does art work? How does someone take a blank page or canvas and fill it with wonders? In considering this and meditating upon this speech coming up, it occurred to me that perhaps St. Mary MacKillop's words provide some answer to this impossible question. Because through, through windows into hearts and minds, we see that we see the images and thoughts of so many young artists. And as St. Mary McClough said, there where you are, there is God. So as I look around tonight, I see so many journeys of so many young artists navigating their own journeys through faith, love, and creativity. I know that my father, were he here, would certainly be smiling tonight. And I certainly like to believe that he is here in spirit, continuing to support and inspire others through this award. With those words, it is a very great honour to award tonight's prize, and the Brian Jordan Prize for 2012 goes to Renmark Mart from Good Samaritan College, Mission Brook, for the work Landscape. <laughs> 